Hello, I'm JW. This time I have an item which has been sent in, and it's this item here. It's something you apparently plug into your electrical outlet, and then it creates a repelling force field which gets rid of any uh, vermin and creatures in your house in the general area. So let's uh, see what this actually does, and of course then we'll take it apart and see what's actually inside, and whether it actually does anything at all. So here's what we got. It's a pest repelling aid, as seen on TV, of course, and it's for rodents, roaches, ants and spiders. Non-toxic, no chemicals and no poison, and probably not much anything else either. Simply plug into any home outlet. Turn your home's wiring into a pest repellent force field. So allegedly this thing is going to somehow uh, plug in here, so on the diagram, and create some kind of force field using the wiring, which allegedly gets rid of things like rodents, ants, spiders and all that. Now, a couple of problems with this thing. First of all, you see it doesn't have the UK plug on because, of course, this came from the usual suspects. But uh, the question is, what kind of force field is it actually going to be doing? It's going to be some kind of uh, electromagnetic or radio type thing, assuming it does anything at all. And then even if it does those things, do those things in fact get rid of rodents and creatures and whatever else? So there we have it. Now, it says down the bottom here, made in China, and it's 110 to 240 volts, so pretty much any old voltage will do. Household or residential use only, and apparently it complies with part 15 of the FCC rules and uh, all that other business there. So it's probably just copied from some uh, other product. Double insulated, no serviceable parts. Not recommended for use around rodent type pets. So if you have a pet rat, probably not recommended for that, as uh, apparently that's what it's supposed to get rid of. So anyway, let's get it open and see what we have inside. Now, of course, this was not uh, sold in the UK. It came from an uh, internet site, and it was no doubt shipped directly from China. So let's get the thing out to see what we have. So, in terms of instructions, it's literally just the packaging we've already seen. Plug it in, and it does the job. And uh, two-bladed prong plug there with holes in, and uh, there's literally no weight to this at all. There's a window on the front there and a couple of others there. And confusingly, there's some kind of button on it as well. So totally unclear as to what, if anything, it may actually do. So let's plug it in and see what gives. Now we're going to plug it into this, and we've seen this in other videos previously. This will just basically tell us how much power it uses, power factor, and so on. And because this has one of those dubious uh, fits all and doesn't fit anything plugs, then we can just shove it in here. And then we shall switch on. So, on the uh, front of the device, then we've got a red, presumably LED flashing on and off there, and a solid green. And this window doesn't seem to do much. And uh, if you press the button, a blue light comes on, in addition to the red and the green one. So, uh, got some pretty lights on it. So, in that particular state, what do we got? So, power then uh, 0.61 watts, voltage stays 246. So. Not too bad. Power factor 0.9, and uh, obviously it's not going to use a great deal of power per year. If you left it on all year, it's going to be a range of 65 pence. Now, what do we get when the blue light is on? Okay, well, that doesn't seem very reliable, so oh, there we go. No, it's, the switch is actually bust. So I'll just hold the switch down. So with the switch held down, we're getting 0.92 watts, and power factor 0.9, so much change there. And if we release it, then we get 0.6 watts and about well, 0.9 power factor. So basically that uh, uses fractionally more power than it does with the light off. So the most likely conclusion there is that the light itself is what's using the power and not doing a great deal else. So it has some pretty lights on it. I presume that it's supposed to latch in the on. Oh, there we go. It does latch in the on position if you gouge it in hard enough. But uh, yes, yeah, not uh, much else apart from a blue light, flashing red one and a solid green. Now in terms of opening this, uh, there are no screws or other visible fasteners. There's pretty much no weight to the thing, so it's just going to be a question of uh, prying it apart. Now, the sides don't appear to be fixed together particularly well, so we can probably uh, just branch the thing open. Let's uh, go with the knife there just to separate around here. Yes, well, that didn't take a lot of effort, did it? Let's just have a quick go down this side. It's probably just a few spots of glue or something securing it in place. So, 
Yeah, it's not a whole lot holding that together. So top cover then, it's literally just a hole for the three LEDs to poke through and then the button is a loose item fits in. Some weird uh, shape in the top there, but nothing there. Now bearing in mind, if this was actually plugged in, it's quite likely that the front would just come off anyhow when you pull on it, because it's just those four pegs apparently hold it together. So what have we got in the bottom here? Well, we've got some resistors, three LEDs, which we've seen before. A couple of diodes then, another one here, and a capacitor, and there's the button which uh, works reasonably well with the cover off, it's just that front piece is a bit squashy. So, let's take this uh, screw out, and it seems to be one, see what we've got inside there. So, I've removed the screw there, only one. So, are there any secret components hiding on the back to generate a magic force field? So, of course there isn't, there's just nothing there at all, look at it, it's just a circuit board, a couple of wires there going over to the connector there, so line of neutral comes in on those two pads there. And then all we've got on the front is essentially three LEDs, one of which is switched via the uh, button here, three diodes, three resistors, and then a single capacitor there, which we need to do a bit of smoothing out of the supply. So uh, pretty much nothing there, and most of the uh, power is going to be wasted away in the three resistors there. So uh, it's just basically a miniature little heater with three LED indicators to go with it. So definitely not going to create any kind of force field, not going to repel anything, and it's just going to sit there flashing some coloured lights for as long as you keep it switched on. And the blue one might be sort of semi-useful as a kind of nightlight feature, but of course it's not really because it's got that annoying flashing red one as well, which uh, is obviously what you would not want turned on all day and all night. Now here's the circuit uh, from the awful device. So on the top there we've got a 100k resistor, it goes via the switch, that goes to that blue LED, and then there's an additional diode after that, and that's presumably there to prevent the LED from being damaged by the high reverse voltage. And then on the second line we've got another 100k resistor, then we have the red LED with a 10 microfarad capacitor across it. Now this is a flashing LED, and the flashing part is actually built into the LED itself, and that uh, capacitor there is presumably just to maintain a voltage across it so it actually flashes at the correct rate. If that wasn't there it would probably flash at the mains frequency of 50 Hz. And again another diode after that to uh, protect it against the reverse voltage. And then finally the green LED, it's another 100k resistor, green LED and another diode, and all of those things just connect back to the other side of the supply. So the whole thing is literally just three LEDs, three resistors, three diodes to protect against the reverse voltage, and the only additional thing is the switch for the blue one so you can turn it on and off, and then that capacitor across the red one to uh, ensure that it flashes at its intended rate. So there we have it. Not only does it not repel insects, it never could because it doesn't even do what it claims to do. Clearly there's nothing there to create any kind of force field or pretty much anything else, so it is literally just some coloured lights in a small box and therefore will do nothing other than waste a bit of electricity, costing an order of 50 pence a year. So uh, there we go. Beware of buying products which claim everything, and of course in reality can deliver nothing. Until next time, thanks for watching.